Usually we're Beauty in the Bolt, but today we're gonna be Beauty in the Vault because we're gonna be learning how to solder, which is the hottest engineering skill. You can get, pick up the uh, people that you're attracted to at the bar with your soldering skill. <laughs> All you need is solder, soldering iron, and something to solder, so like a piece of wire. The first thing we're gonna learn is through hole soldering. So I'm gonna flip on my soldering iron. I like to keep my soldering iron at 650 degrees Fahrenheit because I'm American. Um, definitely don't touch the tip, but if you do, immediately run your finger under cold water and apply whatever weird herbal medicine your mom believes in. A really common mistake that people make is when um, the solder isn't working or when things aren't going right, they jack up the heat on the soldering iron. That's the last thing you want to do. You want to turn the heat down. You really don't want to run it too high or you'll start burning things off of your boards. A good tip for soldering header pins on, when you order sensors or anything, um, they'll usually come as just a board with holes in them and then header pins. And you have to know how to solder them on without going crooked. And how you do that is with a solderless breadboard like this. So you put the header pins in the breadboard and then you can put your perf board on like so. And so now you can see you've got the header pin sticking through the perf board. Um, it's all flat, it's all pretty, it's all beautiful. I don't have solder. Andrew, can you get me solder? Oh, options, thank you. Rosin core solder. You and that Rojas approved stuff. So we're gonna take our Rojas approved solder because Andrew's a goody two shoes. <laughs> Perfect, my soldering iron just heated up. So the first thing I wanna do when I get this is um, tin the tip of the iron. I'm gonna do that by just pushing it against the solder and you'll notice it kind of disappears. You've now got that glob of solder and I'm just gonna throw that in our steel wall. And I, um, but that gives you a nice, clean, non-oxidized tip for soldering. Solder flows to where it's hottest. So wherever on your part is the hottest is where your solder is gonna be, which means that if you're only putting heat on the pin or on the solder or on the board, that's the only place the solder is gonna go. So. And then the other thing is that heat flows through surface area. So the more surface area you have against an object, then the more heat is gonna go into that object. So the key is that you want to get um, an equal amount of surface area between the soldering iron tip, the pin, and the little copper circle around the board. So to do that, I'm just gonna wrap around. I'm gonna tap the soldering iron on both and make sure, so I've got a pretty even amount, and then add solder in. And once there, and there you've got a nice joint. And you wanna get that nice little little pyramid. And so, I'll show you again. This angle is really difficult to solder from. And always be sure to be cleaning your tip frequently. It's kind of like painting, you know, you want to make sure that your brush is always clean and has enough pigment on it. Keep in mind it's okay to start by putting your iron on the thing and letting it heat up a bit before you go in and add your solder because then it'll flow much more nicely. Now I'm ready to go and I can lift my beautiful thing off and you'll see you've got these header pins. They're nice and straight. Heh, <laughs> this is my favorite part. I'm pulling these out. Eh, it's great. I want to show off my dress. I should do like a full <laughs> fashion show because this dress is baller. Yeah, we'll go all out with the, you know, so another thing we're gonna learn is how to desolder. So say you soldered something on and then you screwed it up and now you have to take it off. So my number one way to desolder is I like solder wick. This is just a braid of really thin copper and I can pull it apart here so that you can see. Think of it like a sponge for solder. You know, it's got a bunch of holes in it and the solder can flow up the wick. So maybe I'm feeling like this, this connection should have been made. So I'm just gonna hold that on there and really press the soldering iron into it. And if the solder wick is filling up, so you can see that's got a ton of solder in it. So I'm just kind of gonna move farther up the wick. Don't be afraid to really get in there with your, with your soldering iron. And now we've got a slightly more silver eye, except you've removed your mistake. Good job. All right, so the next thing we're gonna learn how to do is splice two wires together. Don't count on your solder to be the structural integrity of your joint. Do not count on the solder to be structurally sound at all. Okay, this is actually kind of interesting. So the difference between solder and welding is that solder does not melt your workpiece at all. It only connects them together, which is why your solder joint cannot be a mechanical function. It can't have any support. Whereas welding is when you melt your work pieces slightly as well, and then the workpiece and the filler material are melted together to create a mechanical joint. 
Did nobody else find that interesting? I think that's super cool. <laughs> These are by far my favorite tool probably on the planet. I was expecting to get a pair for my birthday and I didn't and I am still bitter. That's why we broke up. If you don't have really expensive, really fancy pair of wire strippers, you can be like the plebeians like myself. Um, those were borrowed. <laughs> Um, and strip with a normal pair of wire strippers. I, what I like to do is take about that much and then cross them and twist. So we're gonna twist this babies together and then take your solder. So I'm gonna tin my tip a little bit here. All right, so this is something called heat shrink, and it's basically tubing that shrinks as you heat it up. So I'm gonna slide that on like such. Cool. So then this is a uh, heat heat dryer. <laughs> this is a hot air gun. Um, I basically turn it on, and it starts producing hot air. And as you point it at something like this, turn it like a little rotisserie chicken. And we're good. See how quick and easy that was? So that's if you have solid gauge wire. If you have stranded gauge wire, different ball game. Again, we're gonna strip this wire. The thicker the wire you have, the more you want to strip down. So that's even, I would say, not quite enough. I'm gonna strip a little bit more. So again, with the, with the twisting, but what I like to do is actually kind of fan it out and break it in two like this and take those two kind of link them like a diamond and then twist so this is a pretty solid joint there's a lot of wires tangled together there that's not going anywhere uh, really if i were doing a lot of these i would definitely switch to a bigger tip get my solder on there clean it off get a nice big glob of solder um, to tin this and then and this is just gonna take a while and so you'll notice I'm, I'm laying the side of the iron against the wire and that's just to allow more surface area for heat to flow and just pushing my solder in um, when I hit the end of my solder be sure to throw it in your solder waste container and put that in electronics waste because high chance it will have leaded material in it so now that you can see the solder is really infused throughout throughout this joint. That was a lot of wire, um, so as a result, a lot of solder, but there you go. Again, put your nub, solder waste, not the trash can. Do not put solder in the trash, put it in solder waste. Thank you. The baby seals will thank you, as will pretty much all the animals living in the dumpster landfill. But you know when they like build parks on top of the landfill? Those animals. Future, animals, future animals, or when you live on top of a landfill, you'll thank yourself. Since I did heat shrink on the last one, I'll use electrical tape this time. Thank you. I'm gonna take some electrical tape and snip, snip, snip. The thing with electrical tape is it's stretchy. Take advantage of that. You can get a nice tight uh, tape job by pulling on it as you wrap it around. And obviously, that's a little bit messier than um, the heat shrink, but it's definitely insulative, it definitely works, and that's also not going anywhere. Beautiful, now that I've made a mess, um, be sure to periodically go through, throw your things in solder waste. And it, here is my solder waste. Uh, soldering shouldn't cost you a whole lot of money. I mean, like a $30 weller, you can get it on Amazon or Radio Shack. If you can find a Radio Shack that still exists, um, is perfect. And when you're done with your project, it is super critical. Turn your soldering iron off. You do not want to burn your house down because you've like left your soldering iron on. It's like leaving your stove on. Like, nothing probably will go wrong, but you might give your cat a really bad surprise. <laughs>